Good morning, my friends. Welcome to worship this fourth Sunday in the season of creation. And this morning, we also celebrate World Food Sunday, which we have transferred, which from a couple of weeks ahead in the calendar to this morning. And also World Communion Sunday, which means that we here as an Ipua United Anglican shared ministry will be celebrating together our first combined communion service. What a grace and a blessing this morning will be to gather here in this sacred place. We welcome those of you who join us at home, either on Facebook or YouTube or NAC TV. It is an honor and a privilege to be invited into your lives as well. And this morning is a special morning beyond all of that because it is our first Sunday school morning. We welcome back Sunday School, and let us welcome, welcome them properly. We have missed you. Our call to worship. In the darkest valley at the banquet table, in the hard work of life at the moments of ease, in our day-to-day -day reality at times set aside, like this time now for worship, for listening, for paying attention. With every step we take, goodness and mercy follow us. Our cups overflow. Carolyn will play our opening hymn from Voices United, number 395, Come In, Come and Sit Down. As a part of our commemorating World Food Sunday, I would invite uh, our members from MS to come forward. 
they're going to share with us some information and as a part of their presentation uh, they were going to include the children's time this morning which is something that we will have to get used to I'm afraid guys little ones normally we would invite you up here and we'd have a great big to do and we'd sit on the floor together and well because of COVID we're not going to be able to do that for some time so during the children's time of the presentation just stay where you are and then we'll let you go off to Sunday school after that. Susan? Good morning. So World Food Day which as Reverend Chad said really happens next, uh, not next Sunday, the 18th of October I think. We've um, taken the liberty to move up to today. Uh, just here in Nipois, I guess, is where that's happening. Anyway, the Mission and Service Committee wanted to take this opportunity to talk a little bit about um, what World Food Day is. And Elsie's going to help me. She'll tell you a bit more about actual World Food Day in a few minutes. But in the meantime, I wanted to talk to you about um, what Jesus had to say on this subject and he had lots of things to say about uh, sharing and so on and the story we are looking at today or talking about a little bit is when Jesus talked to his disciples to explain to them that the kingdom of God is like a big party or a banquet. Jesus talked often about what the kingdom of God was like but today's story is that about a party or a banquet. So he told the story of a rich man who invited people to his house for a banquet. And lots of people had lots of reasons to not come. So they said, sorry, can't come. And the story just goes on from there. And it's kind of a, f well, I have a fun way of telling you the story. It's a video. And the video is um, all about music and Lego two of my favorite things, and it'll help us remember the story. So let's have a look at it. Pretty some, pray 
So, I don't know about you, but even though we can't sing in church, that tune might be stuck in your head all week long, I'm thinking. <laughs> so, Jesus said, even though this wealthy man invited all those people, everybody came up with a reason not to come. And he said, what a shame to pass up that awesome opportunity. How sad for them to miss that because everyone is invited, you and me, and everyone in the church, everyone watching at home, and everyone around the world is invited to this wonderful party. He also said that we don't need to wait for a banquet to happen and for us to be invited. We can create our own party, our own banquet anytime. And we can do that in just small ways too by doing something small for somebody else and making them feel like all of a sudden their life is a little bit like a party. I have just a couple of questions for us just to think about. Nobody has to come up with um, really brilliant, deep answers. Just think about them. And if it takes all week to think about them, that's okay too. How does it feel when you are invited to a party? Or how does it feel when you're left out? What things could seem more important than being with God at the party? And what can we do to show God that we want to be at the celebration too? One other thing, God wants us to know that we don't have to wait, like I said before, for someone else to plan the party. We can do that part. In a few minutes, Reverend Chad is going to ask us to the Lord's table. Um, that's what we sometimes call the table up here where communion is served. And, and he's going to say that we're all invited to that table too. Would you like to say a prayer with me? It's going to be up on the screen. Let's pray. God of the banquet, we thank you for inviting each of us to be a part of the incredible things you have planned for all who follow and love you. Thank you for preparing a place for everyone at your table. Help us to see the little things we can do every day to make our lives and the lives of others just like a banquet where there is enough for all and room for everyone at the table. Amen. And now Elsie's going to tell us a little bit about World Food Day and about the Canadian Food Grains Bank and all the resources that we're using today we found on the website for the World Food Grain Bank. And there's lots of information on there, so if everybody, anybody ever wants to go there, it's just canadianfoodgrainsbank.ca. World Food Day. The Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, or FAO for short, created World Food Day to commemorate its founding in Quebec City, October 16, 1945. The goal of the FAO is to free humanity from hunger and malnutrition and to effectively manage the global food system. World Food Day events are organized in over 150 countries across the world, making it one of the most celebrated days of the UN calendar. These events promote worldwide awareness and action for those who suffer from hunger and help strengthen the link between agriculture and food security. The Canadian Food Grains Bank. Canadian Food Grains Bank is a partnership of 15 Canadian churches and church-based agencies working together to end global hunger. We work with locally based organizations in developing countries to meet emergency food needs, achieve long-term solutions to hunger, and to work to foster inf informed action by Canadians and governments to support this international cause. Before we go on, we're going to have a, another video coming up right away, but I'd like at this time to introduce the members of our MS committee, and if they would please stand when I say your name. 
Susan Phillips, who is our chair, Donna Newton, Donna Smith, Leona Kucher, B. Betts, and myself. Thank you all. If you like that video as much as I do and the words to that, to that song, you can find it on YouTube. It's called Room at the Table and it's by Carrie Newcomer. So if you just Google Room at the Table, uh, a bunch of options will come up and look for Carrie Newcomer. Um, so our program actually this morning has been called Room at the Table and now we have an invitation for you. It's an opportunity to make a difference uh, in a small way, but all those small ways add up to big ways. We know that. We invite you to take a card. It's going to look like this. There's a bunch of different colors. And pick one up on your way out. 
Donna will be there to give you a hand with that, and B. So they're at the back of the church. Pick one up. Just only need one per household. If you feel like taking two, that's okay. But one per household is what we'd ask you to take. And the invitation is to tonight at dinner, or if you want to wait until next weekend when it's Thanksgiving, at your, at your Thanksgiving meal, place an extra place setting. Put an extra plate on the table. And put that card on that extra plate. And before you start your meal, read the story. There's a story on one side of the card, and there's a prayer on the other. So read the story, and then say the prayer, and then enjoy your meal. And at the end of the meal, if you feel so inclined, make a donation to the Canadian Food Grains Bank. Now, Bob, I didn't check this with you before, but in the past, when we've done donations to the Food Grains Bank, Bob has been okay with that coming through the church, and then one big check gets sent to the Food Grains Bank. If you'd rather do that, then I think you could bring it in, not if that's correct, Bob. Thanks. <laughs> Make sure you make your check out to the United Church. The memo line, to the, bank. the memo line put Food Grains Bank. Okay? And if it's over $20, then Bob will make sure you get a tax receipt for it. If you want to send it directly to the Canadian Food Grains Bank, that information will be on that card that you're going to pick up. And they too will send you a tax receipt if your donation is more than $20. Um, one quick little note when we're talking about small differences. In some countries, it can cost as little as $15. That's one five, 15, to provide food for one person for a whole month. So you can see how easy it might be for some of us to make that difference. Thanks. Thank you, Susan. Thank you to our Mission and Service Committee for engaging us in this very important piece of commemorating what is very important work and ministry. At this time, I would like to invite B and Murray forward to light our Paschal Christ candle. Let us pray as they light. O oh God, light eternal and splendor of heavenly light, set our hearts on fire with love for you. And as light comes from this candle lit by our unity, may the blessing of Jesus Christ come to us, warming our hearts and brightening our way. May Christ our Savior bring life into the darkness of this world through our love. Amen. Thank you, folks. And in this fourth season, uh, Sunday, in the season of creation, we will be pouring grain to commemorate the passing and the marking of this season. And here in God's bread basket to the world, our beloved Canadian prairies, seeds, grains, and pulse crops are all around us, reminding us that our farmers feed humanity. As we pour out these peas, let us give thanks to God for the abundant love shown to us in creation. And for good full imagery, we've got a few wild oats in amongst the peas. <laughs> I'll leave that with you. <laughs> and we respond together. As these crops feed the world, may we too be fed in body, mind, and spirit, so that we may help to pour out God's love. Amen. 
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Collect. For those of you unfamiliar with that term, a collect is a very English way of saying collect. And it collects our prayers together in common. Gracious God, in love you open wide the doors and welcome us into your presence, saints and sinners alike. You spread a table before us, filled with the richest fare, a feast of love and mercy for body and soul. We come with joy to meet you here, to eat and drink at your table, to taste and see your goodness, to celebrate your grace and mercy in our lives. May your spirit inspire our praise and thanksgiving, our prayers and petitions as we worship together in your presence. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our host and Lord. Amen. Murray is going to read our lessons for us this morning. Our first reading is from the book of Exodus, chapter 32, verses 1 to 14 the story of the golden calf. When the people saw that Moses delayed to come down from the mountain, the people gathered around Aaron and said to him, Come, make gods for us, who shall go before us. As for this Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. Aaron said to them, Take off the gold rings that are on the rings of your wives, your sons, and your daughters, and bring them to me. So all the people took off the gold rings from their ears and brought them to Aaron. He took the gold from them, poured it into a mold, and cast an image of a calf. And they said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. When Aaron saw this, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made proclamation and said, Tomorrow shall be a festival to the Lord. They rose early the next day and offered burnt offerings and brought sacrifices of well-being. And the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to revel. The Lord said to Moses, Go down at once. Your people whom you brought out of the land of Egypt have acted perversely. They have been quick to turn aside from the way that I commanded them. They have cast for themselves an image of a calf and have worshipped it and sacrificed to it and said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, how stiff-necked they are. Now let me alone, so that my wrath may burn hot against them, and I may consume them, and of you I will make a great nation. But Moses implored the Lord his God and said, O Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say, it was with evil intent that he brought them out to kill them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth. Turn from your fierce wrath. Change your mind and do not bring disaster on your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants, how you swore to them by your own self, saying to them, I will multiply your descendants like the stars of heaven and all this land that I have promised I will give to your descendants, and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord changed his mind about the disaster that he planned to bring on his people. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Our responsive psalm is Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. We believe in the goodness of God. We believe God hears and responds to our needs. We believe God responds to all children everywhere. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. We are grateful that we have been blessed with enough water. But we know that many do not have enough. Not enough water, not enough food, not enough peace. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his namesake. Too many children do not see God's righteousness. Too many children watch violence, taste hunger, feel fear. Too many children cry from the unspeakable horror of war. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. To become involved is risky. Pain is often contagious. Our hearts may be broken and our lives may be threatened. Yet we hear God calling and we can no longer hide. Thou preparest a table for me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup overflows. Our steps may be small and timid. We may read a book, write a letter, or make a gift. But each tiny step is blessed by God and multiplies. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. God is more relentless than war. God is more pervasive than hatred. God is more insistent than despair. Amen. Our second reading is from the letter of Paul to the Philippians, chapter 4, verses 1 to 9. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. I urge Euodia and I urge Syntyche to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you also, my loyal companion, help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel, together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. This is the will of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Marie. As always, as you are willing and able, I invite you to stand for the gospel reading. This morning, however, because it is a communion service, there are different responses for that gospel reading, which will be found on the overhead. The Lord be with you. And also the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The parable of the wedding banquet. Once more Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, 
Look, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it, and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized their slaves, maltreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, The wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go, therefore, into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe and said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot, and throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Let us bow our heads to pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be ever acceptable in thy sight, dear Lord, our strength and our redeemer. May only your truth be spoken here, God, and only your truth heard. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Today's gospel reading has me in mind of weddings, which is a very obvious segue. I have been blessed with three sisters and a brother. The last of the three sisters was engaged here a few weeks ago, and they are to be married next September here. They live in Calgary, and so the wedding's going to be here in Riding Mountain at Clear Lake. It will be a beautiful fall wedding, I'm sure, COVID permitting. We aren't bringing that up very much with my sister these days. We're encouraging her to plan just the same, which comes quite naturally to her. She's a lot like me that way. She likes to plan and put things in order and make sure all the boxes are ticked and those sorts of things. Needless to say, she has every bow, tablecloth, frill, and frou-frou either organized in her mind or ordered from Amazon so that it will be here in plenty of time, likely to be stored at mother's house until the wedding, you know, so that her space can be cluttered up rather than the bride's. As with my sisters, Sarah and Jessica, I will have the privilege of officiating at Casey's wedding. It will be an honor and a privilege. I mean that. And I say that I mean that because all of you know weddings can go sideways at times. And at other family weddings, I'm not going to commit to whether or not those were the weddings of my sisters, um, I have felt like the game show host on Family Feud <laughs> as a brother and officiant, you know, trying to keep differing opinions and warring sides of families at bay, trying to keep things focused on what is important. Now, with all couples that I prepare for marriage to enter into holy matrimony, one of the main things I try to convey to them, which is difficult in the throes of organizing and planning arguably the biggest party of their lives, is that they focus on the marriage which they will come to have and hold. Any of us who have been married more than five minutes knows that that is what we are left with after the party after the banquet, after all the planning and the frills and the frou-frous and the tablecloths and the dancing and all of that, it is the couple left with that marriage to make it work or not. 
It is human tendency to focus on the details. Maybe because those are the things we can control, or at least we think we can control, convince ourselves that we can control. In actual fact, just because we order it from Amazon doesn't mean it will arrive. Or just because the bride wants pink frill bedecking every space that will stay still doesn't mean that's going to happen. Sometimes wind plays a factor. Sometimes mother-in-laws play into it. Sometimes, maybe I, I'll just leave that one there. <clears throat> Weddings aside, this natural human tendency to focus in on the material is woven into our scripture readings. Each one of them. In Exodus, the Israelites, sojourning in the desert, are left alone for five minutes. <laughs> Moses is up on the mountain, spending time with God. And they lose sight instantly of what they are to be doing. They do exactly what they are instructed not to do. They feel as though they've been abandoned because they've been alone for five minutes that somehow God and Moses have turned their backs on them, and so they want something material to worship, and so they make these graven images, the golden calf, begin to worship the material. In Philippians, Paul write, writes to the church in Philippi because he has been away from them for about five minutes, and already he has heard they are forgetting his teaching. They have slipped from the good way. They have not been focusing on what is important, carrying out the mission, the ministry of Christ. Our parable in the wedding banquet certainly speaks to this. Those who were invited, as the song famously said, and as Susan said, will be stuck in our head now, uh, forever, <laughs> they could not come. They decided that the everyday details were more important. The king had invited them to his son's wedding banquet, which, by the way, was so extravagant that a team of oxen were sacrificed to feed the guests and the fatted calf and all of the other things. A team of oxen would be akin to having a brand new Cadillac pushed over the edge to please a bride, a groom. This was an extravagant banquet. They would not come. In the balance, they looked at the king's invitation and they looked at the things they had to attend to, farm, business. Well, ah, the king can have his feast. We're going to attend to what is important. And what farmer and what business person wouldn't attend to those details? For after all, the wedding banquet is one day, one evening, likely. The farm and the business, well, they're going to be there to attend to and take care of and deal with long after. After all, that is what's going to feed them beyond the one night. Our practical side says, actually, as rude as it seems to turn the king's invitation down, they didn't make such a bad decision. They were thinking of their future. To you see, my friends, this human tendency to do just this has us focused on what is perishable, on what moth and rust destroys, that which will not last no matter how hard we work for it. It will all crumble and disappear 
go over the edge, if you will. All the bows and the frou-frous and the frills and the tablecloths and the, all of that will go away. The couple will be left with the marriage. And we are called by God, although to attend to those things, to search deeply within our hearts and ask what it is that is most important. All of those things, the details of the wedding, the farm, the family business, all the details of life can be attended to in the name of God. All of those things and the mundanes of life, doing the dishes, raking the leaves, cultivating the acres, doing the grocery shopping, whatever it is, can all be done for God by recognizing that those blessings that grace our lives are from God. And without God, we would not enjoy them. This is why Jesus, by telling this parable, implores us to focus on things that are more important than the material, the here and the now. To focus on the heavenly things and to put things in order in our lives. I pray, my friends, that as we come to this table together, united, Anglican, Christian, old, young, joyful, sorrowful, that we do so in the knowledge that it is God who feeds us, God who takes care of us, God who has invited us to the banquet graciously. And because of this, our response is to put God first to receive those blessings with a grateful heart and to then go out fed and nourished by God to attend to those other details and to give thanks. Amen. In response to our words from Scripture, we have our affirmation of faith. This morning, we will be saying together, the new creed. Together, we are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God, who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God, we are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us, we are not alone, Thanks be to God. Amen. I would invite Murray back to the lectern to lead our prayers of the people. Prayers of the people. In response to the call, Lord, in your mercy, please respond with, hear our prayer. Let us pray. God, we come into your presence with praise and thanksgiving for your faithful love. Your love never fails, not even when we turn away from you, when we ignore your invitation or desert you for gods of our own making. Even then, you do not abandon us, but reach out again and again, inviting us back into relationship once more. As you welcome us, so you welcome our prayers. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We bring them to you with confidence, knowing that you will hear and answer. 
We pray for the world you created and the people who share it with us, for those caught up in war or violent conflict, for farmers struggling to adapt to the changing climate, for the millions in our world who are starving, for the millions who are chronically hungry, for greater action on our part to feed the hungry, for those who harden their hearts against the poor, for all who work to eliminate world hunger, for all our neighbors, both known and unknown to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Pour out your spirit, unite us as one human family. Fix our hearts and minds on what is true and honorable and right as we search for better ways to serve your people and work together to end hunger. Keep us faithful to the call we have received in Christ Jesus our Lord, extending your loving invitation to the world around us. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. These things we humbly ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy, welcoming sinners and inviting them to this table. Let us confess our sins in preparation to receive this sacrament, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Normally, before we come to the communion table, when we share the peace, we would do so with much handshaking and hugging and merrymaking. This morning, I invite you to stand and to just turn to those around you and offer a sign of Christ's peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another that sign of Christ's peace. During the offertory hymn, we will have folks come forward and unveil our communion table, and then the offering will come forward. That offering hymn is 466, out of the Voices United and out of Common Praise, number 63, Eat This Bread. Please be seated. Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
The Lord be with you. Also Lift up your hearts. Give thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Loving God, a source of all, we thank you and praise you with our lips and with our lives. That having created us and all things through your word, you welcome our prayer and praise. For the goodness of creation and the glory of redemption, we praise you. For the law of holiness, inviting our obedience and the call of the prophets, rebuking our disobedience, we praise you. Therefore, with all that is seen and unseen and with all the faithful of every time and place, we join in this hymn of praise and thanksgiving. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, Lord our God, for the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation, in calling Israel to be your people in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil, and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, a death he freely accepted, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to his command, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine and juice. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we made acceptable in him may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new, and bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your daughters and sons. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now we pray as our Savior Christ has taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 
I am the bread of life, says the Lord. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Whoever believes in me will never thirst. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who trust in him. My dear friends, this will look and feel different for all of us. Because of COVID, because we are now a joined family, because we are going to try to limit uh, contact and all of that due to the pandemic, we are going to communicate the north side of the church first. Ushers will indicate when it's time for you to come forward. When you do come forward and form a line in the center aisle, you will have your hands sprayed with hand sanitizer before receiving the wafer, which we are using again because of COVID. Once the north side has communicated, then the south side will do the same. So, south side, they have to break the ice. <laughs> You'll have it all figured out by the time they're done. North side, God bless you. <laughs> what is most important here, amidst all of the... Uh, measures that we're taking because of health regulations amidst all the differences is that we are coming together as Christians and receiving Christ at this communion table.
Is there anyone who remained in the pews who would still like to receive communion? Good. Thank you to our ushers and our assistants um, for making this smooth. For our prayer after communion, let us pray. Most gracious God, who gives the fruits of the earth for the benefit of all your creatures, we give thanks to you for abundant harvests and plentiful food. Most of all, God, we give you thanks for the revelation of your love in Jesus Christ, who came that everyone might have abundant life. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of God, as you have been loved, love. As you have been welcomed, welcome. As you have been fed, feed. As you have received, give. And may the boundless love of God, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the presence of the Holy Spirit be always with you. Amen. is going to share with us our minute for mission this morning. Our minute for mission story on this World Communion Sunday is entitled Access to Education in Zambia. Women for Change and a mission and service funded global partner that empowers girls and women through education. Access to education is a major challenge in Zambia, especially in rural areas where the majority of people live below the poverty line. An estimated 500,000 children of primary and secondary school age are not enrolled in school. Rural children, especially girls, are more likely to drop out of the school system or never be enrolled at all. Traditional attitudes towards women, poverty, early marriage, gender-based violence, lack of sanitation facilities, and this decision to use scarce resources to educate boys rather than girls all block girls and women from fully participating in educational opportunities. When the United Church women heard stories of girls and women in Zambia, they wanted to help and decided to support Women for Change as their major project for three years. The people behind Women for Change know that it takes more than just money, books, and shoes to motivate girls to remain in school. There are new role models, particularly in rural areas, women who have received higher education and can inspire girls by showing them the difference an education can make. With the support of United Church Women and through mission and service, Women for Change will focus on programming to create opportunities to give girls and women living in rural areas the encouragement they need to remain in school. If mission and service is giving is already a regular part of your life, thank you so very much. If you have not given, please join me in making mission and service giving a regular part of your life of faith. Loving our neighbor is at the heart of our mission and service. Thank you. Thank you, Elsie. Just a couple words of announcement. We appreciate all those who call uh, to register for worship. We know this um, is not easy and not how we would normally do things. And it is difficult for those of us who plan worship and try to make this a very welcoming space to have to engage in that. Um, However, each week our numbers are climbing, and praise God for that. Um, but we are going to ask that if you do not plan to come to church, um, and your name is on the list, if you don't mind giving Don a call to say that, <laughs> you know what, we're away, because those seats may well be needed. Uh, because whether you, uh, maybe you don't know this, we are capped at uh, 83 
persons, 30% uh, of our capacity. And so if you don't plan to come, um, if you don't mind just giving Don a call by Friday. Of course, if things change between Friday and Sunday and you can't call because the office is closed, well, not to worry, but we're just trying to do our best to um, accommodate numbers and those of you uh, attending worship. And on that note, for October the 18th, which is just a couple of Sundays away, a reminder to you that there is no service at 11 a.m. It will be at 3 p.m. as it is our covenanting service for New Awesome, United Anglican Shared Ministry. Um, Dawn is taking registrations and we have been blessed by public health uh, to be able to use our CEC building for additional seating, um, which now I believe is the only space we have left um, that Sunday. But as I'm reminding myself, um, it is a blessing to have that space to be seated in the building for that service. We're going to try our very best to have not only audio but visual over in the hall uh, so that those of you sitting apart over there will be a part of things uh, here in the sanctuary. And so we thank you once again for your patience with, with that. Um, also asking for your prayers for that service as we approach that monumental Sunday in the, uh, the life of our congregation. Flowers this morning at uh, the communion table are given to the glory of God and in loving memory of Keith Lockhart by Marion and family. One final note about how we have um, received communion today. Why we have asked you to come forward rather than remaining seated and having it passed to you is because we're prohibited from passing things one to another. Some of you may have thought, oh, well, that's how the Anglicans do it, and they've really, you know, horned in with that. <laughs> but it's a practical way to limit the contact between you, um, which is why we do all that we do in terms of health precautions. Uh, but it was a joy to communicate uh, together and to receive Holy Communion together this morning. Uh, and with Carolyn's blessing, we have... Um, we have not decided to do our last hymn. Instead, you are going to watch a video, Room at the Table, same song, but the video is the dance version. So we'll hear that now. Is it 
to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.